Let us now take an example from model 2 of set theory. The question given here is in a class of 106 students, each student studies at least one of the three subjects maths, physics and chemistry. 48 of them study maths, 51 study physics and 53 chemistry. 16 study maths and physics, 17 study maths and chemistry and 18 study physics and chemistry. So this is the information given to us followed by five questions and each question here carries one mark. So altogether this is a five marks question. Let us see what are the questions here. The first question is the number of students who study exactly two subjects is equal to what? Second question is the number of students who study more than one subject is equal to what? Third one is the number of students who study all the three subjects is equal to what? Fourth one is the number of students who study exactly one subject will be equal to what? And the last one is the number of students who study physics and maths but not chemistry will be equal to what? So as we can observe all the five questions given here are based on the information given in the question. So with respect to this information we have to first of all draw the Venn diagram and fill all its regions and then proceed towards solving each of these five questions. So let's take up the Venn diagram for the given information. Now as we know here we have three sets one is maths the second one is physics and the third one is chemistry and the total class has 106 students that means the universal set or the total set is equal to 106. Now the first statement here is in a class of 106 students each student studies at least one of the three subjects maths physics and chemistry. So very clearly each of those 106 students are involved in either maths or physics or chemistry. They study at least one of these three subjects. So very clearly there is no student who studies none of these subjects. So the region which represents none should be equal to zero in this particular case as each student is involved in at least one of the three subjects. So let's take the three subjects with the help of three circles as shown here. The first circle be maths, second one physics, and the third one is chemistry and we know that the different regions here are A, B, C, D, E, F and G and the eighth region will be H but H here is equal to 0 as at least one of the subjects is studied by each one of the students so this is equal to 0 and the total of all these regions now has to be equal to 106 the universal set is nothing but the sum of all these seven regions. So total is equal to 106 that is given in the question total is 106 students. Now the next statement says 48 of them study maths. Now we know that the number of students who are involved in maths is represented by these four regions. So we can say A plus D plus E plus G is equal to 48 as 48 of them study maths. Be careful it is saying that 48 of them study maths. It doesn't say 48 of them study only maths. Had the word only been given, we would have taken A equals to 48. But because only is not there, the complete circle is 48. Then 51 study physics. So this complete circle is 51. So all these four regions amount to 51. And likewise, 53 study chemistry. So the total of this circle is equal to 53. Moving on, it says 16 study math and physics. 16 students study math and physics. So math and physics is represented by D and G. So D plus G is equal to 16. Then 17 study math and chemistry. 17 students study math and chemistry. So math and chemistry is represented by this leaf that is E plus G. So we can say E plus G equals to 17. And 18 study physics and chemistry. So as you can see physics and chemistry is shown by G and F together. So G plus F is equal to 18. But as we know to fill the values of each of these regions we have to first of all find out what is G. The centermost region or the region that is overlapped by all the three circles. And G is not given in the question directly. So with the help of the formula we have to first of all find out what is the value of G. We know that the formula here is total equals to set A plus set B plus set C minus both AB minus both BC minus both CA plus all ABC plus none. So let us substitute the given values in the formula and find out what is the value of G or the region which shows all A, B and C. So going by the formula total, total is nothing but 106. So 106 should be equal to set A. Set A is nothing but the students who study maths which is 48 plus set B, set B is physics 51 plus set C is chemistry so 53 minus both AB, both A and B here is nothing but 16 
both a and c is 17 and both b and c is 18 so we can say minus both a b so minus 16 minus both b c minus 17 and minus both c a can be taken as minus 18 plus all a b c all a b c plus none none is equal to 0 so this is equal to 0 so by putting up the values in the formula now we can find out what is all of a b and c that means the number of students who study all the three subjects a b and c so by simplifying this we find that all a b c or nothing but g will be equal to 5 why because 48 plus 51 plus 53 will be equal to 152 152 minus 16 minus 17 minus 18 will be equal to 101 and 106 minus 101 will be equal to 5 so we can say that all a b c or the region g will be equal to 5 so now we can say this is equal to 5 once we know the centermost region the remaining regions can be filled from the given data now as we have discussed earlier after filling the centermost region we should now try to fill the three regions d e and f from the given question we know that 16 students study maths and physics maths and physics is represented by d and g together so d plus g is equal to 16 as per the given question 16 is nothing but d plus g so d plus g equals to 16 already g is 5 so by taking 5 here we can say that d will be equal to 16 minus 5 that is 11 so d here will be equal to 11 so 11 students study maths and physics only but not chemistry now the next part here is 17 students study maths and chemistry maths and chemistry is represented by e and g the intersection of maths and chemistry is e plus g so as given here 17 is nothing but e plus g and we already know that g is equal to 5 so again by taking 5 here we can say that 17 equals to e plus 5 so e will be equal to 17 minus 5 12 so here e will be equal to 12 the next part here is F that is nothing but physics and chemistry from the given question we know that 18 students study physics and chemistry and from the Venn diagram physics, physics and chemistry is represented by G plus F so this 18 here is nothing but G plus F out of which again we know that G is equal to 5 so by taking 5 here we can say that F will be equal to 13 Why? because 5 plus 13 is 18 so the region F here will be equal to 13 now after filling the regions D, E and F, we now need to go for A, B and C. From the given question, we know that 48 students study maths. And from the diagram, we can say that maths is nothing but the region represented by A plus D plus G plus E. And from this, we can now find out what is the value of A. Why? Because this A will be equal to total 48 minus the remaining three regions. So 48 minus 11 minus 5 minus 12. So 48 minus 11 is 37, 37 minus 5 is 32, minus 12 will be equal to 20. So we can say that the region A here is equal to 20. Similarly, we know that 51 students study physics. Now physics is nothing but B plus D plus G plus F. So B now can be taken as 51 total minus these three regions, 11 minus 5 minus 13. So 51 minus 11 is 40, 40 minus 5 is 35 35 minus 13 is equal to 22 so this will be equal to 22 so this is the value of b that is the number of students who study only physics and the last region here is c from the given question we know 53 study chemistry so chemistry again is nothing but c plus e plus g plus f already e g and f is known to us so c can be taken as total 53 that is chemistry students minus 12 minus 5 minus 13 so 53 minus 12 is 41 minus 5 is 36 minus 13 will be equal to 23. So C is equal to 23. So with this, we now know all the seven regions. That is A equals to 20, B is 22, C is 23, D will be equal to 11, E is 12, F is 13 and the region G is equal to 5. Now once these values are known to us, we can quickly answer the given 5 questions. And remember we also know that h is equal to 0. That means the number of students who study none of the 3 subjects will be equal to 0. Now the first question here is the number of students who study exactly 2 subjects. Exactly 2 subjects. Now exactly 2 subjects here is represented by D, E and F. D is the region which shows students studying maths and physics only but not chemistry. So exactly 2 subjects, maths and physics exactly two subjects math and chemistry and exactly two subjects physics and chemistry so the answer for first question can be taken as 11 plus 12 
plus 13. This shows maths and physics only. 12 shows maths and chemistry only and 13 shows physics and chemistry only. And by adding all these three, we get the answer as 36. So we can say that 36 students study exactly two subjects. The second question is number of students who study more than one subject. Number of students who study more than one subject. Now these 20, 22 and 23 are the values which shows students studying only one subject. But we want more than one subject. So more than one subject will be 11, 12, 13 and 5. That is two subjects and all three subjects. Already the sum of two subjects is 36 from the previous question. So 36 plus three subjects 5 will give us the required answer. So this can be taken as 36 plus 5 that is equal to 41. So students who study more than one subject is 41. Why? Because remaining students 20, 22 and 23 here are those students who study one of these subjects, only one of the subjects, maths or physics or chemistry. So total of remaining value should give us the answer for question number 2. The third question is number of students who study all the three subjects. Now very clearly from the diagram we directly know that all three subjects is studied by five students. So that is the answer for question number 3. Fourth one here is the number of students who study exactly one subject. Now exactly one subject here is number of students studying maths only, physics only and chemistry only. So that can be taken as 20 plus 23 plus 22. Why? Because students who study only math is 20, students who study only physics is 22 and those who study only chemistry is 23. So sum of all these three will give us the answer for question exactly one subject. So 20 plus 23 plus 22 will be equal to 65. So that is the answer for question number four. And the last question here is number of students who study physics and maths but not chemistry. Now this again can be answered directly from the Venn diagram. We know that number of students who study physics and maths is represented by this leaf here. That is D and G together. But the question says who study physics and maths but not chemistry. That means students should not study chemistry. So if we remove this region, chemistry circle, the region which shows maths and physics is D. So we can say that the number of students who study maths and physics but not chemistry is equal to 11. So this answer here will be 11. Students who study physics and maths but not chemistry. Likewise, students who study maths and chemistry but not physics should be taken as 12. And students who study physics and chemistry but not maths should be taken as 13. So these are the various types of questions that can be asked in case of three sets. As you can see, answering these five questions here is not a difficult task. It doesn't take any time. But the only point is we should be able to draw the diagram properly and find out all the required regions. So this is how you proceed for solving a question with respect to three sets. Remember always we should know the value of centermost region. That means the region which shows maximum overlapping to fill the remaining values in the Venn diagram. So practice well on this question and make sure that if this comes in the exam, you bag your five marks. That's all from set theory. See you in the next session. Thank you.